and sound. Everything fell silent. The world appeared to have stopped turning. Standing on the tracks was a big steam locomotive, stopped abruptly from a leaky feed water gasket. But then came the sound of a howl. But that sound was from no wolf or coyote, but a creature that nobody thought was real. It all started one night when my fireman and I couldn't start a 1400 class 460 for our midnight St. Louis and San Francisco passenger train. The engine simply wasn't steaming well, and the only engine available was a 462 numbered 1023. So we swapped out the engines and the train was delayed, as expected. The locomotive left Fort Smith as quickly as the speed limits allowed us to. <laughs> Hot damn, we need to get going. We're a few minutes behind schedule. I need to work overtime here. Well, don't burn yourself out, bud. Very funny, Neil. The Ozark Mountains are no easy task for a locomotive. Keep in mind, this was a few years before the T-54 mountain types were built. I think around 1923. This was 1921 during the event. The engine was hauling the light passenger train through the grate. We were going very well. The engine ran smoothly, and the night was silently beautiful. My fireman, Bert, worked his rear end off trying to save time that had been lost. Can't say I really blamed him. So, right about the straight line, we heard this noise. Alright, she was reaching the station in about 18 minutes. Thank the Lord! Aw, oh, crap. What's happened now? Sounds like something is leaking. Stop the train! And so we were. 1023 was stopped right there in its tracks. Turns out the feed water gasket was leaking and was spraying a small jet of water. Bert and I climbed out to fix it, and as soon as we were about to fix it, we heard a noise from the forest behind us. What the? The hell is that? We didn't know if it was a coyote or a wolf, but when we collected our senses, we realized it was an unnatural combination of a wolf howl and an elk bugle. Everything fell silent from there. The only sounds were the locomotive and some murmuring. Then I heard the fireman, Bert, say something. Hey look, that's a bear. But bears don't make that noise. What even is that? But before we could guess, the creature walked away. I opened up the regulator once more, rather rattled. <laughs> Now, the train was even more late. The creature decided to pace us for a while behind the bushes before retreating again. After we arrived at the last station, the engine would have to be lubricated before it would be reassigned to another train in 40 minutes. I climbed out of the cab while my fireman stayed inside at the ready. As I was oiling the running gear, the station master came up. Oi! What explains you being 42 minutes behind schedule, Neil Fraggle? We can explain, Ted. So, the 460 that was supposed to bring this train here was having some steaming troubles. We swapped it out with the 462 and tried to make up for the last time. Then, the feed water gasket malfunctioned. We tried to fix it, and we heard the most unnatural sound we've ever heard. It looks like a combination between a bear, goat, and a mountain lion. It was quite large and had a shaggy gray coat. It was then that I saw Station Master Ted Evans' face go pale, and remain silent for about 10 seconds. You haven't encountered the Ozark Howler, haven't you? The Ozark what? Shh! You haven't heard the story? I have, and I believe it. Stop trying to give us nightmares, Ted. We're already on edge for being late. Hush, hush, this will explain your encounter. Alright. The Ozark Howler is a creature said to dwell in the Ozarks. According to tradition, 
The creature is bear-like in shape, with a gray-colored shaggy coat and glowing red eyes. According to some witnesses, antlers or horns are seen on another creature, but that is subject to debate. Its sound has been described as very deep and guttural, as well as a high-pitched howl. Others have said that it's the most unearthly scream, and half-human. One of the most common descriptions of the sound is like the screams of a woman. Those who have heard the screams pierce the night never forget the chill that ran up their spine and the feeling of dread that washed over them. Some claim the sounds are made by animals commonly found in the region. They point to the screams and howls of animals like the red fox, fisher cat, and even fighting raccoons. The more he told me about the Ozark Howler, the more I got hooked. Aside from being a rare engineer, I decided to take on a hobby of studying cryptids, like the Howler. Most sightings go as far as back to 1946, but believe me, I, as a former Frisco engineer who saw the Howler in 1921, can guarantee you that that thing's been around for centuries, and is very, very real. Many of my colleagues encountered the Howler during different time periods. On the night of the station attacks, a 4,000 class Mikado struck the Howler after it retreated from the station after its purge. Five years later, a class 1 2 stopped right in front of the creature. The Howler proceeded to sniff the locomotive and growled angrily at the crew. The locomotive and its crew were able to get away without any injuries reported. Sightings were sighted on the railroad very often, but seemed to decrease in the following years of World War II and dieselization, to the point not a lot of these stories were ever documented. But from what I know, signs for the general public outside of the Frisco have been increasing. My story so happens to be one of them. So wherever you walk around the Ozark Mountains, just be careful. You could encounter it, leading to a horrific and early doom.